Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT. RPT. Uh, it is Wednesday, 27 April, year of our Lord, 2022. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, this is your host, Chingo Bling. We've been knocking out a lot of episodes today. Producer Rob, I got him. Man, I, with the same shit they give Biden, that's what I'll be having to give Rob, man. He's up. He's on one. You know, a couple shots of espresso. Next time, I'm going to need a couple shots of tequila. I thought he was going to say a little bit perico, a little bump. I'm down for that, too. You know, we do got an open border. You probably get you some. Somebody might have put some in those coconuts. We didn't even know about it. These might be <laughs> counterfeit coconuts. They might be filled with the good stuff. But, yo, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, we have a, a special guest today, Gil, from American Cholo Show Podcast. I mean, he's on. He's big on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people that watch us watch him. Mm -hmm. And we always want to bridge the gap with other people with different opinions even though a lot of his stuff he's very common sense you know i agree pretty much damn near everything yeah pretty much except i mean i think he might have um i still think he like really hates trump he a little TDS. Bit. <laughs> i was he's still kind of like he was yeah. grabbing about a pussy and yeah, there, was, there was that porn star but but nah man uh much respect um when we first and we talk about it on the interview but like when we first interacted it was just kind of like all right man we went off on each other in the comments because you know at the time, everybody was jumping on my page. <laughs> I shouldn't have blocked all those people. You know, I should have left some. <laughs> it might have been helping my little algorithm. Yeah. But um, but like I said, he was one of the probably the only person because anybody that was trying to like address me or or have an opinion or read my mind or 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 like how dare this guy? Anybody that was like disappointed or whatever, like I tried to DM, reach out, well hit me up, maybe I can whatever, and I hit him up, and he, you know he hit me back and he was just one of the few that's like all right man like yeah we still a little a little hot around the collar right now but okay like on some man shit sure i'm down to like so i was like yeah i'll go on your show and explain and you could ask me questions or whatever but yeah man um i mean i think he's a, a likable character he's he's good on the mic mm -hmm. uh um he's definitely built an audience and we want to bridge like we want as many cali homies northern cali southern cali's like like we need more voices like this we yeah. don't all have to agree on every little thing but like where's the person from georgia that's doing what he's you know where's the person from tennessee or the group from chicago that's doing what we're doing like all these different channels and platforms and voices because a lot of what we did talk about was how do we address some of the issues in our community like mm. how do we address the working class how do we get more power in the hands of the people and everybody's fed up with bullshit corrupt politicians that just lie they promise you stuff then they disappear yeah and uh he talked about and i don't want to spoil the episode but yeah just yeah. listen to it we wanted to do an intro here at the top obviously we got some tour dates to mention uh you probably already heard but the merch Show them that yeah merch, man, man we got a lot of merch man legalized freedom we got some new shirts coming of course i'm on tour so uh we're making we're making all kinds of cool shit we got some new t-shirt designs we have some ideas uh for like uh official thea agent member mm -hmm. t-shirts um we wouldn't mind doing some other kinds of stuff that people might like like yeah. a, a cool saying you know on a coffee mug or a beer mug like we're all, we're here to serve you yeah so let us know what you like if you were listening to chingo chats and you haven't listened to the podcast since last week we did shelve that show and we talked about it we did a, a final chingo chat uh and we're replacing it with another rpt which is going to be free to the public so that's wednesday thursdays free boom dan sas yeah monday friday extra premium episodes for our patrons so sign up for that if you want the extra content and we have an entry tier for the discord which is just un dollar the price of a hot and spicy from mcdonald's you get access to the big poppin ass general chat i don't even think the dollar menu exists still brother oh you know what? you have we have to remember what they took from us bro go ahead and read your dates i'm gonna find out uh that's something they took from us but like rob said um brand new tier added to the patreon just go to patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales a brand new tier it's only a dollar and it unlocks a section of the discord chat room which is where a lot of the action a lot of the minds yeah. collaborate there so we're feeling generous today <laughs> uh legalized freedom tour coming in hot i will be in corpus christi that is the next stop that is may 5th through the 7th chingo de mayo comedy weekend may 5th through the 7th corpus christi texas Arlington, Texas at the Improv, May 12th through the 15th. New Braunfels, Texas, May 20th. Lubbock, May 22nd. Bryan College Station, May 28th. San Angelo, Texas, June 3rd. Odessa, Texas, June 4th. Austin, Texas, June 9th. Albuquerque, June 15th. El Paso, June 16th through the 18th. 
Irvine, July 6th, Ontario, July 7th. And I forget which show is closest to Gill, but last time I was out there doing a run, mm -hmm. uh, I tried to get them to uh, be VIP at one of the shows. So many cities, Chicago, OKC, Phoenix, San Jose, Wake, perhaps Waco, Brea, California, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison, so much more, chingobling.com. Get your tickets now. Do not get sold out. They still have, it's the one, two, three dollar menu now. One, two, three dollar menu? Yeah. What do they have for a dollar? Uh, they don't even put it on their website anymore, but they have like, they still have the McDouble, the hot and spicy, the fries, and then they have like breakfast sandwiches, coffees, hash browns and stuff like that. I feel like the hash browns is going to be a dollar and everything else is like two, three dollars now. <sighs> Los chicken nuggets, Los McNuggets. Bi Biden's America, bro. Dollar hash browns at McDonald's. <laughs> what if they're three dollar hash browns? Fuck you. Three dollar hash brown? Oh, it didn't have the price. It, oh. didn't, it don't even show the price anymore. Well, you know, Dollar Tree is now Dollar Fifty Tree. You're right. I mean, everything's going up, and obviously, it's not all Biden's fault. We can't just put it on one, one man. You However, can. the I way will. they're printing money, I mean, he ain't the first one to print money, but like, not only are we sending money to Ukraine, we're printing money for Ukraine. Every time I look up, it's like 800 million. You know, we didn't get to talk about a lot of stuff with Gil. Um, maybe be a part two. Yeah, yeah maybe next sure. time I'll go back on his, on his show, God willing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, man, there's like so many things where, where I would love to see our raza. I don't need everybody to like, oh, well, you got to be America first, fool. But maybe become more well-versed in terms of like, what are some policies that sound like they're going to be good for you, but really ain't versus some shit that they're trying to label as racist or xenophobic or whatever, phobe, yeah. Muslim, Islamophobe, transphobe, whatever. What things are actually going to be good for you, your community, your taxes, your wallet, you, you know? Your, All these things we talked about, it, at the root of it, it you have to say you got to get educated, right? You have to want to get educated. You have to want to learn about it, and it has to come from you. Nobody can force you to want to learn what's going on. you got to finally be like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Oh, my wallet hurts. Oh, yeah. you know, my community sucks. Yeah, why is the gas so high? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, concern yourself with it. If not, it's definitely going to concern itself with you. That's right. Like, Somehow, some way, it's gonna touch you. The the saying goes, "Get involved with politics before it gets involved with you." That's what I was trying to say, but I fucked it up. But yeah, man, like you got these elites um, who get these big donations from other elites. Have you finished the laptop from hell? Not yet, man. I have Is so many audio books. Oh, it's fantastic, okay. dude! I'm on the chapter right now where it talks about how much of a pathological liar Joe Biden is. Um, the minute that he lost his wife and um, how many kids, like one daughter, I believe so. he lost a wife and a daughter in a car wreck and his two sons ended up in the hospital. Well, he made sure when he got sworn in, he made sure we're going to do it right here by this hospital bed next to these two kids with bandages. He made that the center of his thing. All the files that had to do with the wreck just disappeared because allegedly maybe she might have been drinking or something might have been at fault. Um, I don't know. I was kind of listening, doing other things. <laughs> yeah. But also, he would badmouth the other driver who was involved in that wreck, saying, a gentleman who decided to drink his lunch instead oh, of eating. Right. But, but anyway, just slime ball, corrupt, old school, just racist, like real deal, like such a fucking weasel smart ass. And now you see him up there like... He can barely open just, his eyes anymore. Just fucking smiling in, in your face. It's like, bro, you won't address... The fentanyl. You want to address that chemical warfare that, that arguably genocide, like a hundred thousand Americans dying a year from fentanyl. I think pretty soon the statistics gonna be like one out of every four Americans is gonna be undocumented, and that's less reason for them to cater to us and our vote because they got new voters coming. And it's like they don't need to depend on the dead people and whatever else. It's like they got it open. That's a problem. That's a big problem. They got the border wide open and. Some people would argue they're like, man, they trying to they looking at those people as votes. They're going to hand them something, promise them something, okie doke them. Meanwhile, us that are starting to wake up, they're like, fuck y'all. We ain't worried about y'all. Está cabrón. Está bien cabrón. So I hope you guys enjoy this phone call and this interview. Um, Gil. From watch America it on CBTV. Yeah, watch it on CBTV. Uh, we just hit 17K subs. Hey. Very excited. I'm very grateful because it's the second channel. That once again, I'm asking you to subscribe. I'm asking you once again, once again for your support. Once again, I'm coming at you about to hit the bell. You know what I'm saying? Ding. My 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 YouTube looking real dry, but uh, but yeah, man, we're we're glad to have Gil on. I heard him recently on on We Don't Smoke the Same podcast. He's making his rounds. He's popping up on a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, he's coming from the Cali perspective. 
he's vocal about what's going on locally and I, and let us know what you guys think i think there's a lot to chime in and comment and unpack yeah and drop discuss. it in the comment section for sure yeah i i anticipate that these are gonna are gonna do well just because he has his fan base and then there's like that synergy so i'm looking forward to it thank you guys so much for the support shout out to all the members of the thea without further ado gil from american cholo special guest today man uh yo gil you're blowing up brother american cholo is blowing up i looked at my analytics on my youtube and it showed me that one of the main channels that i guess we have in common we share or like a lot of my viewers also watch the american cholo show nice so today uh he's returning the favor he's on our show and i'd love to go back on your show for sure, man. Whenever you're ready, brother. Yeah, shout out to Boo Boo. So we have uh, we have Gil in the building. What's up, brother? What's up, man? What What's going on, Mr. Chinko, man? Thank you guys for having me on, brother. I appreciate it. I thought uh, I thought you were canceled, but you're back, man. You know what? I might be canceled. I really don't know. I might be shadow banned. <laughs> we'll find out. I know I'm I'm good in the outskirts of the L.A. area, SoCal, like nah, on, man, Ontario way. Bro, they love me in Ontario, Irvine, Brea. They still love me. <laughs> everywhere, they love. everywhere, homie. They just love to hate you sometimes. But it is what it is. Well, I, I'm not vexed, so I don't know if I can go in L.A. County just yet. Uh, nah, they don't, they don't look for that no more. They, 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 well, I don't know. They're coming back with that. That's, that's kind of crazy. So so what are we talking about today, Chingo? Man, I actually, I want to talk about um, a few things. Just we could keep it random and loose. But, sure. um, but one thing you mentioned, I heard you on the uh, We Don't Smoke the Same podcast. Yes, with the uh, XG, the homie XG and, and Ernie Ezone. And one thing you mentioned, you said you were like, dude, I'm getting hate from everywhere. You're like the Republicans, the Democrats, the fucking the homeless community. Like what's going on? You've been vocal about some things you've been seeing. So uh, I'm, I'm a lot in, in the center, but I'm a little bit center right. I'm not going to sit here and lie. Right. So, yeah, I get it from everybody. man. It, it's kind of tough for me to to actually, I guess, get a whole crowd because a lot of times what you see on the internet is somebody's either going to hate the left completely or somebody's going to hate the right completely. And I kind of hate them both because the hypocrisy runs on both sides very deep. With, with When you had your thing, you know, and, and what most people don't know, and, and I'll let them know, is you and I are cool, man. People yeah, think yeah. that, we, we, that we were... Yeah, we started off on the wrong foot, and and I apologize. That's mostly my fault. I'm, I'm much too old to be trying to gangbang on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and it, it was all good because soon after that, we chopped it up, and, and I'm like that, too. It's like I work. I can get into a fight with a guy one day, but I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about, you know, you get into it, and after that, it's puro pedo, and you keep the show going on, right? Yeah, and, and plus, like, I don't know whose comment section I decided to just, you know, run up in there and reply to anybody who said my name. But uh, I have to give credit to Gil because he's one of the few that, like, were man enough to, like, you know what, bro? Uh, sure. I'll lock your number in. And then when everybody's blood pressure goes down, like, we could touch right. base. Because my thing was, like, hey, I want to have uh, discourse and conversation. And, you know, I, I want to be able to explain how I see things or whatever. And Gil was, like, one of the few people that's like sure all right bet let's i'll hear you out i'll get you on the show well so it sounds like gil's catching some arrows himself like you were well G gil's very outspoken but go ahead and Gil and, and tell yeah well uh, i'm ca i'm definitely catching like i said on both sides because I, I i will talk crap about you know biden and his administration and all the stuff is going down i mean you can see it i'm sure you'll rub it in my face you got gas prices through the roof you've got inflation going through the roof you got homelessness problem going that's governor out here so i'll talk all kind of stuff about the left wing and how they're running the country but i'll also bring some stuff up on the right that i don't like and you know i don't really bring it up now because people say well, why don't you bring it up now because uh, right because trump is not an office or republicans not an office right now so i usually criticize whoever's in office to kind of show people that both sides it's kind of like it's two doors, but they go to the same room. And and most of most of uh, politicians are just like WWE stars. They sit there in front of the cameras and fight and talk all this crap. And behind closed doors, they're friends. They go to each other's weddings. They go to each other's uh, so, kids' recitals. Yeah, they're, they're all they're all buddies. But in reality, I feel like we're the ones getting scammed, which is the middle class. But we continue to fall for the okie doke. So I'm I'm not making friends on the left. I'm not making friends on the right, but like I said, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to have those conversations. Yeah. And and the and that's another thing, Chingo. When when people and the and, and unfortunately the left does this more than the right. I'll admit it. What they will do is they will sit there and as soon as you have a disagreement with them, they're gonna start screaming at you, get out of here, and, and come up with all that crazy stuff. We're not gonna get anywhere that way. In order for us to get 
wherever we want politically to the promised land, let's say, we need to sit there and stop and say, all right, guys, put your pants on. Let's sit down here like big boys and have the conversation. What do you think we can do with like immigration? What do you think we could do with the homelessness problem? Instead of just pointing fingers, and that's typically what happens on, on local level politics and on higher level politics. People just want to scream at each other. That way they have a reason for people to get upset and want to vote for them. And that's how it kind of goes. Yeah, and one thing uh, on the Republican side, uh, on that party, you have a lot of controlled opposition. You have like basically like liberals in conservative clothing where they're they're not really they get this um a lot of the, the more maga america first like your Mar marjorie taylor green matt gates and more like fire breather jim jordan type of people like we need to investigate wuhan and and what's up with fauci like those folks um you know they call out like there's a big rift and a big split with the republicans where like some they just don't fight hard they don't push back they always want to meet halfway you know what i mean they're yeah. not really doing shit for free speech elon right. musk is trying to do more for free speech than these motherfuckers hey gil i gotta ask you so to kind of go before we move forward i personally want to go back a bit to that original podcast that you did because somebody sent it to me when you had you had uh, made it and you were addressing all the things chingo was talking about yes where were you coming from at a point in your life that made you want to go on that long rant well, the rant, on Ch and I took it down, by the way. Well, I, I pissed, I, I probably pissed him off. I just on there talking yeah. shit. <laughs> Chingo definitely pissed me off, and he admitted to it. So what happened was, this is when Chingo first came out the closet, right? Not, not, <laughs> the conservative closet. He's slowly yeah. still yeah. coming out. Yeah. No, that's the he, hard one to come out of, yeah. He came out of the conservative closet, and myself, I was coming from two from two areas. One area is a big fan. I come, I've been hearing Chingo blink since... Day one since, you know, since I guess he blew up. And this was, you've been blown up for 14, 15, maybe 20 years, Chingo, very long time. Yeah. So I'm coming at a fan standpoint. And then I see him uh, post some stuff. And then he said something about. I want all oh, the smoke. <laughs> yeah, you got well, all yeah, the smoke. Yeah, before the smoke. I, and I try to actually, you know, have a conversation with him. I said, hey, Chingo, this and that. And I came at him very respectfully. And it was pretty much, yeah, I want all the smoke. Like, pretty much. He didn't say quiet, but pretty much was, fuck you, I'm Chingo Bling. <laughs> I was I was copy-pasting where I was like, oh, yeah, with Joe Biden sniffs little girl's hair. <laughs> he was on yeah. the 100th arrow. He was like, he has his last breath. He was going to let it all yeah. out. Yeah. And the thing is that I was replying to him. I said, fuck Joe Biden. I don't care about Joe Biden. I said, see, you got the wrong guy. That's the problem. And I, was, I didn't know what Chingo was like. That. I was like, not, not that you were. I was like, that's the problem. Most people, they want to sit there and assume because you don't like their guy that you like the opposite guy. And I wasn't that guy. I was the guy that says, no, I don't like either one of these guys. So I'm driving. And that's usually where I get my fuel to do stuff. Like, I don't have anything scheduled. I just say, you know what? Perfect. This guy just gave me fuel. Uh -huh. I, at work, I'm like, I'm taking off early. Where are you going? I'm going to go fucking bang on Chingo Blink. That's exactly <laughs> what I said. And I'm That's driving funny. home. Like, 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 boo -boo, okay. I said, dude, I'm going to bang on Chingo Blink. I'm going to go live right now. I'm going to bang on this fool who pissed me off. And why? Because I had a platform. It wasn't the hugest platform, yeah. but it was a platform where, yeah, Chingo heard it. Pretty, I don't know how long it took him to hear it, but eventually it came out like, all right, this guy has a platform. And that's the whole point of me making my platform. That way people can hear my side of the story. And... I, I was very upset, um, but I think in the long run, it, it worked out great because yeah. it got us both to the table to have that conversation. And, and I kind of saw where Chingo was coming from. The only thing I, I think what happened with Chingo, and I still do to a point, I believe that it's, up, it's almost like you, you left one toxica and you jumped into another toxica yeah. relation where you should have just kind of stayed in the middle and be like, all right, yeah. hold on, because because I think your heart was broken by the Democratic Party kind of like high felt about you leaving, not even the Democratic Party, just kind of leaving the chingo bling thing behind, even though you didn't completely. Yeah, no, man, it's all good. Um, I feel like we have a lot in common, and and uh, I like how you've been speaking up a lot about uh, what you've been seeing locally in Cali. Uh, the other day, I saw a documentary about Gascon, the uh, DA. Yes. H have people been talking about that, like his, oh, yeah. his approach? Listen, I, I was talking about Gascon during his uh, his first election, when they were recalling, I forgot what the African American lady, and she was actually grew up in Watts. She's a local from here, and they were calling her a sellout because she's trying to enforce the laws. And I had a I had an interview or a podcast with uh, Alonzo from Street TV. He's been around forever, and I told him, Alonzo, you get gas going in here, crime is going to go through the roof. And he's no Gil, but the he's telling the the analytics and the all the science, studies. the data. I, I don't care about the data. I was a gangbanger on the streets. I used to be the guy carrying guns. I used to be that vato. And what I can tell you is when you get a DA like that into office, it's going to make crime go up. Because one thing right here, you can have somebody 
breaking into your house, catch them trying to break into your house with a knife or something. If but they don't come in the house, they're not going to arrest them. You can have you can steal stuff up to a thousand dollars or less. They're not going to arrest them. These guys that were that were breaking some of these window storefronts and going in there, they were getting picked up. They're getting released the next day. In other words. All the homies, all the bangers out here know Gascon is weak on crime. He's he's coming in here like a like a savior. That's not your job. Your job is to prosecute criminals. But when the guy prosecuting criminals is trying to comfort them and baby them, they're gonna run all over him. And that's what's happening right now in Los Angeles. It's reminding me, Chingo, of the late '80s into the early '90s. And I've been saying this: it's gonna come if. If Gascon stays in office, hopefully he doesn't, it's going to come to a point where crime is going to go even worse, and eventually you're going to get somebody who's going to overcorrect, and they're going to be like, we need to bring three strikes back. We need to start locking mm -hmm. people up again. It's it's a situation where, listen, man, we already know if you break the law, you're going to jail. It's, it's nothing new, and this guy is coming in here. Like I said, he's too soft on crime, and me personally, he's got to go. Yeah, and see, and you're speaking from like, like a big homie point of view. You have your background. You weren't always the angel. <laughs> we know now. I, I still live in the hood. I still, I, I just recently came, I, I live four blocks from the heart of my hood where I grew up, right? I go get my haircut. I go out and I'm driving away. What do you see? I just see all my neighborhood hit up. It's still, the cycle still continues, right? Unfortunately. So I know firsthand what's going on. It's, it's also a place where now you get caught with a gun. It's no big deal. They let you out. Before now, you get caught with the gun. If you're an ex-felon, you're gonna go to prison. That's not the world we live in out here. And I don't I don't know if these guys really believe that they're helping, but I have to kind of believe God, these guys kind of think that, but they're living in a fairyland. Look at the whole country as a whole. After the BLM movement, quote unquote. After they had their movement, what do they do? They demoralize the police department. This is coming from a gangbanger. If you talk to most people that were criminals back then and have you no know, good lives now, they'll tell you the same thing. If you're soft to criminals, they're going to walk all over you because that's what they do. If they if they suck up their own homies and do all kind of stuff to their own friends, you think they're going to do with somebody they don't know? And that's the thing. You, you you Okay, we have to sit there and you got to pick the lesser two evils. Either you're going to pick the police department if you think they're evil, or you're going to piss, or you're going to, uh, you're going to pick the gangbanger. Who do you want living next to you? Me, I'd rather have a cop living next to me than a bunch of homies out there pissing on the sidewalk, talking, uh, telling my wife, "Hey, baby, you're looking good," and and causing problems. But unfortunately, we we've, we've become, or or the media push so much. Cops are evil. Cops are killing black people. Cops are destroying this. And I would have that conversation with African Americans. How do how many black people do you think cops killed that year? Oh, 2000, 3000. I think I said no. I think 2021 or 2020 was 19 unarmed African Americans. When you start getting those numbers and they're like, "Huh?" Why? Because the media pushes the narrative that they want to push at the time, and they continue to do that, and it's an injustice to all of us, man. Yeah, we say that a lot on our show where it's like the left and a lot of the uh, Democrat politicians who try to pander. It's almost like, do y'all care? Do y'all understand that y'all are lying? Like there's a billboard out here in, in this area. This is mostly like a black neighborhood. And um, there's a billboard with like a local representative. Uh, it's like one of those Texas state representatives, something. He had a billboard and he had pictures of slavery, like old school black and white photos. And it says, don't let them turn back the hands of time. Vote. And it's like, wait, you're saying that if people don't vote Democrat, they're going to be back in chains? Like, you're using these fear tactics yeah. instead of saying, well, can we talk about black-on-black -black crime? Can we talk about what, what BLM did? They didn't do not one cookout, not one backpack drive. All they did was <laughs> bought mount, uh, mansions and stuff. Uh, and then I want, I want to go back a little bit. You mentioned the time era in L.A. I think you said late, late 80s, early 90s. Right. I, I lived in East Lowe's a couple years ago, uh, maybe about eight years ago or something for about six months, right? I was in the valley far with, with your boy, right. your boy, you know, from work and uh, for the first six months. And um, anyway, I would hear the homies, it's a homie named uh, Kike out there, um, Kiko out there has a studio in East LA. And they would be like, yo, in, the, in that era, like the late 80s, like it's either, I don't know if colors had just came out, but they said shit was active. Every It was gang bang central. I I myself started banging and so I, I I caught the whole nice peak of it right. I started banging in 1989. I was 14 years old at the time and I I banged all the way up to 1999. That's when I got out of YA. I, I did six years. I went. I was doing two years. Getting out. Two years. Getting out. I was that guy right. And if you look at gangs 
as a stock market. It was the highest bull market in gang's history, and it definitely had a lot to do with the movie Colors. As soon as the movie Colors hit L.A., hit everywhere, everybody and their mama wanted to be a gangbanger, and they did. They joined gangs. Out here, it was like this, and you don't see that now. Thank God. It was on the block. Every day there's somebody there, but especially on the weekends, I'd be on the block with 40, 50 homies easily, easily. You're 40, 50, and there's maybe another, you know, we had a couple different uh, cliques in the hood. There'd be another 10 guys here, 10 guys there, 10 guys here. So all over the city, and that's just one neighborhood. You got anywhere from 40 to 60 to 70 guys in, in, from that neighborhood. And out here, you had, I mean, man, you had us, North Hollywood boys. You had Violent Boys. You had Radford Street. You have 18th Street. You have MS. You got Ali Locos. You got Vanon Street Locos. You got Barrio Vanon. I mean, you just got gang after gang after gang. So everywhere you went, yeah, man, it was it was gangbangers. Like, if you were to uh, see kids coming out of school now, back then, as far as the boys go and the, 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 the Latinos, Chicanos, I would say a good... 50, 60% of every kid coming out of school was in a gang in one way or another. Not their cousin was from a gang, and then they would get into a fight with somebody because of their cousin, and then they would need backup, so they would join the hood, and then somebody else would beat up that guy, and they would join the hood. It was just crazy, yeah. but it, it started off of, off of small stuff, Chingo, and it went, and I saw the transition because I was part of that transition. It went from having fist fights, couple knife fights, and then in about 91 the guns just started really coming out. I'm sure in other parts of L.A., they probably came out sooner. But where I'm from, about 90, 91, the guns just started coming out. And then all through the 90s, it was it was just a – it was like the wild, wild west. I mean, people were getting shot. People were getting killed. It was it was that that you see in the movie uh, – what's the one with Denzel Washington? Uh, training, uh, training Day. It was – Imagine training day, like when he pulls up with the essays out there and they're all out there kicking it. Some are slanging dope the, with the highness. It was that and training day in every single hood out here in LA. That's exactly how it was. Yeah. And, and, and you describe kind of like, like a rite of passage. It's almost like a university <laughs> for the hood people. It, it, it's, it's unfortunate and it still goes on to this day. It, what it is, is this people, people who've never been in the lifestyle won't understand it, but it, it's exactly what it is. It's like a tribe. You write a passage. The unfortunate part is that our goal as gang members out here is to go to prison. Our goal was you go to prison, you just came out of Harvard. It's like somebody, mm. oh, my God, my son just came out of Harvard, just came out of Yale. And that's how, how much we had that ingrained in us. Me, I was like, I was looking forward to I'm going to go through life in the joint. That's Damn. exactly what I was thinking about. I wasn't afraid of it. I wasn't thinking of it. I'm thinking I'm going to go bang because at the time also my brother's a gangbanger. My mom is slangy cocaine. I'm living that whole gangster lifestyle and I thought it was normal. Like I've told people, if I was raised in an upper class area and I was sent to college and I was going in private jets to the Bahamas or private jets to Hawaii, I would think that is normal because that's how I grew up. But unfortunately, a lot of us grew up in a way where mom selling, selling cocaine, the cops raiding my house. Uh, that was normal to us. We thought that was okay. Now looking forward, having three grandkids, having two kids. No, that's not a normal way. And that's what, that's why I try to push the people to say, listen, man, that lifestyle is very low level. And I get, I get people pissed off when I say that, but it is very low level. It is dangerous. Yes. Can people get killed? Absolutely. It is a very dangerous life. But when you look at it as a whole in the whole spectrum of America, it is the bottom of the barrel because you ain't getting nowhere. Our hoods are getting smaller. Most of the homies now are on drugs. It, there is no, people just romanticize it because the truth hurts, and the truth is that we've been killing ourselves out here for 50 years, some longer, but for the majority, for 50 years plus, we've been out here banging, killing each other, destroying each other for absolutely nothing, homie. Yeah, man. Um, and how can you describe to everybody listening to our audience, like your your audience, right? The people that tune in. You do a great job, by the way, with YouTube Thank because you. because I see that you take advantage of all the features and you'll post like clips and I don't even know how to work that function where it's almost like a tweet where you're like, all right, I know I'm gonna get shit for this. How do y'all feel about X Y Z, right? Right. And I, I know you you touched on something about like the Norteño Sureño, like the the prison gang culture that spills over to the streets. And a lot of people don't know. Like for example, when we were trying to come up in the music game we would trip out on how a lot of SoCal artists couldn't explore their entire home state. Like we were able to go all over the beautiful 
state of Texas and go to Northern Cali and get love in Southern Cali. But I felt bad for a lot of like the SoCal and vice versa. There's, there's that, you know, there's that little yes. mm -hmm, division. It, it, it hinders us over here because to this day, it's very strong. It's very engraved. It, it has a lot to do with prison stuff. The North and the South out here in California to this day, don't get along. It's it's just it's one of those things that it, it it came from prison and it spilled out to the streets. But what I tell young guys, because a lot of times people think, oh, give you don't like Norteños. I'm like, homie, ain't no Norteño ever killed my homie. That makes no that makes no sense. And then there's guys who are up north that claim south. So they say, Gil, you don't understand. We beefy with these guys that killed my homie. I say, Well, if that's the case, then I might as well say, F all these guys that live around me because they killed my homies too. All it is at the end of the day, it is a gang on gang warfare. It is it, whether you call yourself Norteño, whether you call yourself Sureño, whether you call yourself Crip, whether you call yourself Blood. At the end of the day, it's just another gang warfare. But it's easy to sit there and say, I don't like that guy because he's a Norteño. Or I don't like that guy because he's a Sureño. And hopefully with time, it, it took 50 years to get here. It'll take another 50 to get out. Hopefully in time we can figure out we're not different, homie. We all... Eat tamales. Yeah, yeah, we all yeah. have abuelas if we're lucky. We all have the same type of tradition, maybe a little bit different, but the bottom line, we are all the same brown men. So I have a question, man, because I'm curious. Uh, I know you, you know, you like to stay neutral, and we do too for the most part. I'll, obviously, though, we're going to be shitting on, like, right now a lot of stuff is coming from the left. So, <laughs> yeah, sure. you know, and you could call it a bias, whatever, but just certain things like free speech, Second Amendment, we just don't go for the... Beto O'Rourke wants to take our guns. It's like, nah, you're not a candidate we're even concerned with at all. Like, yeah, if you aren't right. addressing fentanyl, if we're not talking about, like, economics and the dollar and inflation, then, you know, that's all the right. shit. That's what we chime in on. But, um, you know, like I said, you're pretty central. You're pretty neutral. You try to hold people accountable. What is your goal with your show in terms of, like, like we try to red pill people. Mm -hmm. We, we want right. to... One of our goals is we want our listeners to, like feel empowered and not be so intimidated about some of the political shit, right? Some, who are these people and what are they about? Um, like, like when you talk to your audience and you represent the American Cholo show, like what is something you're trying to spread and extend? I'm trying to believe it or not. I'm trying to awaken the sleeping giant. That is Latinos. That is the voter. We've been hearing that for years. I've been hearing that since I was young. I've been following politics for many years, even when I was a gangbanger, right? And I'm actually trying to awaken, and I say Cali, Mac Chingo, Central American, Latinos, Indigenous, Mexican-American, Chicanos. I'm trying to get us all to come under one umbrella and not pick the right and not pick the left. Pick our own maybe party, if, if I want to say so, make, maybe make our own party and let them know that we're not voting red or blue we're voting what's correct for us we're voting what's going to be good for our children we're voting what's going to be good for our future because the minute you pick a political party you've taken a gang you've taken a stand with a gang like some people will sit there and say oh Gil, you're a, you're a super republican this and that i say i'm pro-choice brother i can be pro-choice and still have right-wing stuff right or, or or conservative stuff or they'll or they'll sit there and uh and the other oh, liberals say you know i'm 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 too much to the right. I'm too much to the left. But the thing in the reality is, no, I'm in the center and the center is a much sweeter spot where you can sit there and actually look at it from uh, all sides. And unfortunately, like I said, when people go too much to one side, you, you can't see it. So my, my main goal, Chingo, is to politically get people educated because a lot of Cali Max are not educated when it comes to politics. They just vote however their parents taught them to vote or however their mom taught them to vote or they just sit there and they'll get one news clip and say, this is horrible, that's horrible. No, we need to actually start educating our youth, start educating our people on, listen, man, like for, for instance, I'm going to pick on the Democrats right now. The Democrats out here in California supposedly love minorities and especially right here in Los Angeles, let's say, right? And I tell everybody, who runs LA? Liberals, right? They're like, yes, okay. How much is your rent now compared to 10 years ago? Oh, it's almost doubled. 
Yeah. You can't afford a house. They're kicking you out of all your neighborhoods. They keep telling you they love you. They're going to give you free stuff. They do, they'll give you a little bit of free food, a little bit of free that. All the while, they're letting all these big developers come in here and say, no, we need more housing for the homeless problem. We have a homeless problem. We don't have a homeless problem. We have a drug addiction problem. And that I'll even put to the right. There isn't one politician out here, Chingo, that really has said, hey, man, we've got a huge drug problem. We need to get these housing down. It's always something just to hustle the people to be able to develop more, get more tax money, all the while saying, hey, but we care for you and we love you. In reality, most politicians, I'm not going to say all, but most politicians, the only thing they care about is getting reelected. And yeah. me, I care about getting our people to figure out, no, we're not going to elect this guy. No, we're not going to do this guy. And my thing is this. I guarantee you, if we can come together to agree on the stuff that we can mostly all agree on, which is safe streets for our, for our families, right? Um, education in our schools that's a little bit higher grade. I would love to see elementary schools teach about stocks, teach about how APR work, how credit works, teach about how loans work, teach about not just one semester in seventh grade and say, all right, now, no, no, no. Pretty much teach them how the real world works, not just teach them how to be employees, but teach them how to actually be bosses. Not just pronouns all day. There you go, brother. Hey, Gil, let me ask you this. The way you describe the political parties, you know, a lot of people say, you know, two, what is it, same? Uh, oh, the illusion, illusion of choice, two yeah. doors lead down the same. All, all that kind of stuff. Is two it, wings of the same bird. Two wings of the same bird is the one I was looking for. Is it safe to say that you don't want the rasa picking a side period? Like, you don't believe that the institutions need to be fixed from the inside? Are you advocating for brown people to not vote for a conservative? I, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying either. I am saying vote for somebody who has your best interests. And I'm not talking about their best interests. I'm talking about your best interest. So in other words, if you had, a, uh, like, let's, let's put, let's put Trompito on the line, right? Mm -hmm. Mr. Trompito. Papi Trompas. <laughs> Papi Trompas, I mean. So Trump, my issue with Trump was on his policies, not so much. His policies were actually decent policies. Just people get, get hurt real quick because Trump is a jerk and Trump didn't really know how to speak to people. And the way I would put it was, Trump is that guy that would sit there and say, "Hey, Gil, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some more money, but I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna call you a wetback on the side. I'm gonna call you this. I'm like, nah, I can't do that, man. I, I'm not being bought by that, right? But there's certain policies like this policy. I'll agree with Trump, and people will get all pissed off. The border policy, I definitely agree with a conservative border policy. Why? Because you can't open the door and let 10,000 people come in or 20,000 people come in because what's going to happen? There's another 20,000 right behind them. And there's another 20,000 right behind them. There's countries down there that want to come to the United States if it's open like that. But on the other hand, what I really dislike about both of them is there is no immigration policy. Nobody has touched immigration since Ronald Reagan. And they will sit there and speak about it. And both this is both right or left. They'll sit there and speak about it, but they won't do it. So if, if I were to see a conservative Republican, and he's really talking about, hey, man, we're going to get some immigration going. We're going to really find an immigration policy that works for everybody. And I really believe, and I have one, I'll make a video on it. I do believe there's an immigration policy that works. It'll take about 10 years, but it will work. If I were to see somebody come on and say, I'm really going to get immigration and actually does it, I'm voting for that guy. And I think most Rasa should vote for that guy. But until that happens, so far what I see is this is, this is what's going on. They cater to African-Americans, and that's both sides. That's right and left. Mm -hmm. uh, LGBTQ, that's the left they, they cater to. Uh, the, the white guys in rural countries and all that, it's the right catering to them. To us, Democrats feel like they already got our vote. They don't care. Most Republicans feel like they're not going to get our vote. They don't care. Yeah. But in reality, we are the huge voting bloc, and we're just not using our power. Our power isn't. We have a bunch of basketball players, movie stars, uh, oh. rappers, singers. That's not our power. Our power is much stronger. Our power is in our numbers. And the thing is, once we realize our power is in our numbers, I can guarantee you every politician from here to Nantucket will be knocking on our door saying, what can I do for you brown people? And mm -hmm. people will say, well, Gil, why do you make it about brown? Why is this America? It's funny how it's always about America until a brown man says, hey, I want a piece of the pie. When they talk about BLM, it's okay. When... Uh, most of the politicians out there, let's be honest, they're Caucasian, they're widows, so they don't have to bring it up. But if the tables were turned and imagine we had all the brown people in power, I can guarantee you the white guys would be like, hey, we're the white guys. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a piece of the pie. And, and uh, I forgot to mention earlier when you were talking about some um, 
some local Cali stuff, Southern Cal- uh, LA stuff. Have you heard of Michael Schellenberger? Michael Schellenberger. No, who's that? I think he's running for governor of California. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He, I think he was on uh, he was on Joe Rogan's podcast, right? Yeah, I haven't listened to it. Did you hear that, Ron? No, I haven't. Well, I so, heard a clip of it. Well, yeah, I, I, man, I wanted to send it to you because uh, I think there was a clip where he was trying to address the homelessness issue, and yes, I mean, I believe that Gascon Gascon was the DA in uh, San Francisco first, and he turned mm-hmm. that into a fucking shithole. No offense, San Francisco people. Uh, and then you, I think Newsom was mayor at the time. Yes. And he recruited Gascon. There's a really good documentary. Uh, it's called uh, Suicide LA, LA Suicide. Oh, yeah, yeah, by Tucker, I believe. Yeah, on Tucker that. on Fox Nation. Man, dude, we were watching it, and they had phone calls from the homies. Yeah. Locked up. They're like, hey, dog, you know, I, I got good news off that shit, fool. Like, fucking Gascon, homie. That's the plug. You know, like, <laughs> he's dropping all my gun enhancements. He's he's dropping my gang enhancement. Like, when they, depending on what crime you would do, if it was, like, really, really bad and you, like, stray bullet, shot a kid, like, all this extra stuff, it'd be like, bro, you're a gang member. You tatted up. you in and out. They'd get you extra time. Well, Gascon mm-hmm. came in with his woke shit, with his Marxism. And uh, all the homies are celebrating. Damn. Yeah, you, usually you would get almost just about a, uh, the same amount of time with the gang enhancement than you would with the crime. So in other words, and this was just off the back, right? It, it, it was like this. You would, let's say you get caught for an attempted murder. You're going to get the attempted murder charge, which will be like 15 with, to life or whatever it is nowadays. But then they would add 10 years off the back for like a gang enhancement, another five or 10 years off the back for the gun enhancement. Another, and at the end of the day, they're making sure you're not coming out. But that sends a strong message to sit there and say, don't go out and shoot somebody. Yeah. And, and the message this is sending out is doing do what you want because you're going to get out. And when you, have a, when you have guys who were speaking earlier who are thinking, I'm going to go to prison, I'm going to do that. They don't care already. So when you have less time, even though that guy is talking, he's probably going to end up doing a good 10, 15 years. But 15 years is much less than doing the 45 years to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, they were happy. They're like, they're like, dude, my lawyer already said you're coming home. And uh, and I think he decriminalized like open air prostitution, open air drug use, uh, decriminalized which is basically making it legal, like petty theft, like you know, stealing from the CVS. Oh, yeah. No, uh, like I said, out here, it's it's my biggest my biggest issue out on my block, and that's why I be saying the green the homeless got a green light on me because I be banging on them fools as soon as soon as I see an RV, I haven't seen one in a minute. Knock on wood, but as soon as I see an RV, I'm going out there. Ching, I go out there and knock on the doors. I be like, hey, homie, you got to get this thing going, man. This ain't that kind of party. You want to go party? Go up a couple blocks, and sure enough, the LA. Is a beautiful city, but it is becoming a shithole. There's tents everywhere. There's RVs everywhere. People are robbing every day. And what's funny is that a lot of the robberies are happening in the rich liberal areas of West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, all these Santa Monica. I think Santa Monica last month or uh, yeah, maybe last month of the month had the highest crime rate of L.A., which was comical because Santa Monica is a very nice area. Yeah. Why? Because people are literally driving from the hood to go rob people straight up because and, they don't care. And it's beachside property. It's beautiful. Yeah. So people that live there, they're paying high rent and yes. they're having to deal with that nuisance of like. As soon as they opened it up to where, all right, you can eat on the patio, enjoy your brunch, you know, and they're sitting out there on the side of a restaurant and they try to look at the waves and it's all tense and mental yes. health people. Hey, Gil, yes. I got to go back a little bit uh, just to go back to the, the political side of things. When you yes. were gearing up for the 2016, and you don't have to say who you voted for, it doesn't matter, but when you're gearing up, you. he voted for him. Uh, when you were gearing up for, <laughs> <laughs> that's how he got me. I, I had a list of notes. Oh yeah, let me tell you why Biden is wrong. Hey homie, I voted for me. I'm like shit. I got nothing. <laughs> oh, when you when you were gearing up for 2016 versus 2020, what was the attitude going into to each one? So I guess starting with, t- with 2016 and then 2020. Uh, as far as I think your 20- candidates, yeah. 2016 was uh, was it Hillary and and Trump? Right. Uh, with when Hillary and Trump went, did I? You know what? No. When Hillary and Trump went, I actually voted for Hillary Clinton. Wow. That one I did. I voted for Hillary Clinton. So that'll tell you. I did vote for Hillary Clinton, but I did really enjoy Trump. I thought I thought Trump coming into the race was the best thing that ever happened in politics. And the reason I thought Trump coming to the race because he showed the hypocrisy on both sides. He showed pretty much, I paid you money, I paid you money. You guys all would talk to me. Trump was at their wedding. I think their their wedding or daughter's wedding or something. They're all friends. And then as soon as Trump started running and showing how 
how much how hip- hypocritical these people are. That's when they all started turning their back on them. And not just the Democrats. You got to remember, Sean Hannity is real good buddies now with Trump. Sean Hannity hated Trump's guts. Fox News hated Trump's guts. All those guys hated his guts, but they had to fall in line because he got elected. So he, I actually went for Hillary. Once um, once uh, he went with uh, with Joe Biden, I put down American Cholo on the bottom of that thing, and I voted for myself. I refused to vote for either one of them. And the main reason I could not get myself to vote for Donald Trump was for his comments that he did starting off his political race because I don't think there's any other race that he could have done that to. Could you imagine if Donald Trump came out and said, Jews are some of the most cunning people they're gonna get you for your money don't sign a contract without a lawyer those people do this those people do that the jewish community would have destroyed them the black community would destroy the most black people robbed they're on welfare than this and that's kind of what he did to it it's not even kind of that's exactly how he started his his political uh run for office and i just that was a pill that was too hard for me to swallow yeah no he he triggered me too i was pissed off i didn't like him i didn't like crooked hillary either uh right. i didn't I didn't start looking at things different until like psh, right before 2020, basically yeah. like pandemic and all. This. I started seeing shit like, oh shit, the news is fake and they're framing, oh, yeah. you know, they'll frame <laughs> you and they'll leave out context. Um, and I have a, a, I have my own little laundry list of things that I disagree. You're like, well, Trump, oh, he picked this person and this person, you know, but yeah, half the Republicans don't like him because yeah. he's America first. And you know, that's how I see it. And a lot of them right. are just America last. They're just like, controlled opposition or whatever but um what, what else we want to talk about well let me let me ask you this it's kind of more of like a like a grandiose type of question but do you feel like there's an existential threat to america as a whole as far as what what do you mean either it's you know how they do those polls like right track wrong track like do you feel like are we so on the right, right track? Now we're on we're, we're we're coming off the rails right now the 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 american the america that's going on right now i think it's it it got way overcorrected by the left it got way overcorrected as far as uh the woke movement um it's it, as far as like open borders it, it's they think they can hug their way out of problems they think they can give money and just and that'll that'll solve the problems like, like for for instance out here in california right they're giving so much money and that was uh the, the i think that thing you were watching they're, they're spending billions of dollars out here and this is what i say i can go out to the hood right now I can give every, let's say let's say we do a focus group. Uh, uh, I go out to let's say a hundred gangbangers that are gangbangers. I give each one of these gangbangers five thousand dollars a month to each one. You think they're gonna stop gangbanging? No, they're gonna buy guns. They're gonna buy dope. They're gonna they're gonna do more of the stuff that they were doing. So throwing money at a problem isn't gonna solve it. We need to sit there and actually make stuff happen. And I I think this administration just isn't doing it. I, I personally I think. I think Joe Biden may be going a little senile. I mean, he's yeah. almost, he's almost, and, and this is not talking crap, but he's almost like that grandfather that just isn't cutting it. He's that manager at work that everybody kind of looks at. And you can tell <laughs> they hide him from the media. Yeah. They won't let, really let the guy answer any questions. And he's just, he's just not all there. It's I mean, just it's gaffes. sad. Yeah. It, he's old. Yeah. It's gaff after gaff. And then the new one, they asked him about Title 42. They're like, sir, Title 42, uh, you know, it's going to go away. What's, what are we looking? He's like, well, you know, it's a federal judge and we got to, you know, the, the Department of Justice. He was talking about masks on yeah. a plane. Yeah. Se le fue la huila. Yeah, so, you can't. You can't so, keep up anymore. Yeah. So some of the stuff, obviously, you know, you, you, you talk about certain, you're vocal about certain things. Some of it could be misconstrued. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa that's kind of to the right or whatever. Like, oh, he's tough on crime or he wants safe communities or he's against the homeless. <laughs> right. Yeah, God forbid, right? So these, radical. These are so fucking controversial now. But in your comment section, are there some things that are part of your stance that you get a lot of pushback on? Like, nah, Gil, check it out, homie. You're wrong because yada, yada. Well, I I do, but the one thing that I actually love more than anything when I meet people, usually they tell me this, right? They say, Gil, man, there's so many stuff I don't agree with. You got me wanting to like, throw stuff at the TV. I'm like, oh, he's like, but you talk a lot of real stuff. You bring the conversation to the table. And that's what this is about. Like you and I, Chingo, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't have to sit there and say, F Chingo Blaine, because, you know, he's a Trump supporter or was. I don't care. At the end of the day, 
if it comes to it, we can agree to disagree on what party. And it doesn't have to get all personal. And that's the thing that I see a lot, especially in the news. Especially Why? Because they don't. They want the drama. It's unfortunate. They really don't want to solve a lot of issues. They want the drama. The, the homelessness problem out here. It's not a homeless problem. It's a drug addiction problem. I've been out here in North Hollywood since 1981. I know what a bum looks like. Jeez. I know what a homeless person likes. I know what a tweaker looks like. What we have out here is a bunch of meth heads and we continue to give them money give them food give them tents give them places to go shoot up dope that's like me having a kid that i find out as a heroin addict and instead of saying hey man you need to get yourself straight or you're out of my house i say well i'm gonna give you the room i'm gonna give you some dope i'm gonna give you a needle i'm gonna give you some money and hopefully you'll get off that dope no it doesn't work that way and it just baffles me how these people really believe they're helping but i'm i'm coming to the point where i don't think it is i think it's just a big money thing Scam. It, it, it goes from, yeah, it goes from bottom level, then it goes to like halfway houses, then it goes to people building these houses like for corruption, them. Like corruption, and, and, yeah. yeah, it's corruption. They, they, have, they have these places, especially right here in my city, right? They have uh, hotels they built. They get the permits. They get the permits. They're going to build a hotel. It was the Best Western. And then right before it's about to open, they pull the Best Western sign out. And who told, one of my homies told me that it's going to go there, right? He's like, hey, fool, that, that's not going to be a Best Western. What do you mean? He's like, no, I already got the thing. Now it's a homeless place. So they build it under the false pretense that it's going to be a, a Best Western. That way people don't fight it. And what do they do? They rent it out to the homeless. And whoever owns that property loves it because why? Instead of having a Best Western where you got people coming in and out, I got full rooms every day. And who's paying my full rooms? The taxpayers pay my tax. Is that? And that's happening more and more. But what that's making is that's making a society where the middle class is going to start disappearing. And you already see that. The rich are getting richer. And that's one thing I don't like about, about the Republican Party. The rich are getting richer. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. The middle class is, is getting pushed down. And until we actually come together and start voting some of these guys out and start running our own policies, it's going to continue. Yeah, especially like lockdowns. I mean, and, and then um, speaking of some of these like liberal policies, check it out with the homeless. So I was in Salt Lake City doing a comedy show and I noticed downtown Salt Lake. My my perception of Salt Lake, Utah, is a lot of Mormons, conservative, religious people, uh, big families like they're just like old school Mormons. Right. So in, in a sense, it used to be like that where it was hard sometimes to even find a beer or even caffeine because everything's like not religious or whatever. Now you go downtown, you have like a Marxist coffee shop with Karl Marx as their logo logo called oh, the, right, the People's yeah. Coffee. Right, right, right. Across Dude. the street, across the street, there's like a Lutheran, Baptist, some kind of church. And it had the uh, the rainbow trans flag and it had the Black Lives Matter flag letting you know that everybody's welcome, which, <laughs> which you know, on on the surface level, sure, that's a nice thing. But some of these organizations are being used as pawns and you see a bunch of homeless you see the cops like walking around pulling up hopping out coming in the coffee shop where'd he go and then they they leave there's people like chill, living in their car uh you see like the 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 homelessness the drugs you see all that and then at the comedy show i um somebody that worked there he was kind of red pilled he's like hey man i like the stuff you're saying on stage man and then he started telling me he said this is the scam that they do he said, you get these organizations or these like, I guess these little local politicians or whatever, they go ask for more money from the state legislature to address a problem they help create. He's like, they're inviting and incentivizing like your metaphor about if you have a son that's on heroin, you're going to enable him. Well, it's worse than that. It's like you're enabling the son and inviting all the neighbors and his friends yes. saying, yes. hey, this is a great place to be homeless. And I did a joke on stage. I'm like, of all the places you could have been homeless, why Salt Lake? Like, it's cold as shit. Yeah. It's like they make you do four years in Salt Lake before you go to San Diego, Santa Monica. <laughs> like, hey, homie, you can't come out here off rip. But I, I thought it was fascinating how he described it. He said, bro, it's a scam. He's like, it's true. they're able to set up these organizations. They ask for the funding. They start to build the housing. They get the, uh, the social centers with the social workers. You got like the... We're going to give them green, uh, clean needles. We're going to get the methadone, you know, just all these little programs for the social workers and the more of the feel good rhetoric. And at the end of the day, who loses the average taxpayer, the citizen, the hard working class that they don't the forgot community. The, the deplorables. Community, yeah. yeah. They don't forgot about it. Gil, uh, my last question for you before I let you go, I know you've been working all day. Um, I'm going to put you through a scenario. I just want your honest answer. Not a lot of times in history do we get to vote for a candidate a third time. So 2024, they wheel out Joe Biden. 
and then you got Papi Trompas up there, and your vote is the deciding factor of who wins. Who are you voting for? Well, regardless of what it is, I'm not voting for Joe Biden. Regardless, that that's off the off the bat with me. Wh- whoever the next candidate is, I am not voting for Joe Biden because I'm not I'm I'm not happy with the way it's going, and I won't. But will I sit there and say that I I won't pull a lever for Trump? No, I'm not going to say I won't pull a lever for Trump. I just hope I just hope Trump actually comes out with a. Uh, with uh, with more respect and actually gives us the same platinum deal he was trying to give the brothers. Yeah, that that's bringing it up all the time. Yeah, we always talk about the platinum plan, and that would have been nice. None of us three here on this Zoom call could have participated in the half a trillion dollars that they were trying to extend to one particular group, and they denied. I mean, a lot of black males and a lot of black folk did vote for Trump, which. I mean, I know that the media painted him as a racist and yada, yada. Right? I'm not a mind reader. But uh, I'm just so surprised that like more black people didn't say, all right, what do we have to lose? Like they don't have the burden of immigration, DACA, Dreamers, the border, being called a sellout, coconut. They only hit them with like, well, you want to be white. You're cooning for the man. You know what I'm saying? You're a sellout. That's how they control us. Well, I think it was the it was the BLM movement that com- controlled them because and, and I told people this. I said this happens every four years. Every four years, when somebody's gone for election, you're gonna start seeing it. And right before the election, you're gonna start seeing the same thing. And BLM's gonna come back. All of a sudden, uh, African Americans are being killed because African Americans have such influence across the board to every race because they have the rappers, they have the basketball players, they have the football players, and they got them all in line pretty much. And if they don't go that route, they start losing endorsements, right? So I I think that's what ended up pushing them. But yeah, where is our platinum plan? Because I even when even when they were did that, I made a video on it. They say this, oh, I screwed the seller. I said I screwed the no seller. I would have done the same thing. They, he would have called me, hey, Gil, you know, American Trollo, hey, would you want to come in and talk? Because yeah, it's business, people. Leverage. And that's what that's what people don't understand. Politics is 100% business. It ain't nothing personal. It ain't nothing love. It's business. And we have to approach it as such. It's a business. I'm not going to go in there. Everybody I work with and, and, and do business with, I don't like them personally sometimes. I may hate their fucking guts. But I know they pay their bills on time. I'm not going to take them out to dinner. I'm not going to go to their barbecue. I'm just here to do a job. And if I do it right, I'm getting paid. And that's the way we need to approach this political stuff. Yeah. And I, I, I finally forgave Trump, you know, because I was triggered when I heard the <laughs> they're rapists, murderers, que la chinga. Si la cagó el güey. Si no, si se pasó. And, and what didn't help is how they, they took it out of context and they ran it because they're like, this is perfect. The Democrats yeah. are like, did you just hear the part we could cut out and just put that bitch on a loop? He'll never, ever gain an inch with Latinos. Hey, but, but you know what? Because I, I, uh, I know you got a lot, a lot of conservative uh, uh, viewers, right? Yeah. My thing is this, though. How is it that. And, and and he Trump is uh God what's his name uh should I have his thing right here hold on right there man what's his name uh from name? Caddyshack uh is that John Candy I can't really Bill see Bill Murray no, I can't see who the the main character from Caddyshack man we're all getting late oh okay uh, okay okay uh, uh Belushi was it no no Jim, his, uh, his stick he's a comedian guy his stick was uh I get no respect I get no oh, respect Ronnie oh, Danger Ronnie Dangerfield Ronnie Dangerfield. Field. No respect. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump is Ronnie Dangerfield, right? He is that douchebag ass developer. He gets stuff done. But this is my question would be to your audience. Maybe they could leave it on the comment section. How is it that the party of Christianity and God's love and this and that took the biggest douchebag who's having affairs with porn stars and everything else and looked the other way? Because that's what tells me that people really don't care. Because everybody looked the other way. Me personally, I'm not a Cristiano. I'm not that. To me, it's all business. But it's just funny how a guy who's that guy, they look the other way and they say, "Oh, he's a good Christian guy," which we all. Yeah. Know. He's not. He's a, he's a developer. Yeah, I think I think um, a lot. I'd just say like half of the Republicans. A ton of them. Some have had to change their tune and come back around. Oh like, yeah. Like JD Vance yeah. and a lot of these people are, are like were never Trumpers at first. But I think a lot of them fought him along the way. There, a lot of them are establishment Republicans, and they'd rather have a Mitt Romney. They're the yeah. John McCain, the Cheneys, like the warmonger, the Bushes, like all these Republicans that sold us out. Uh, they're America last. A lot of corruption. A lot of Republicans out there get, were getting money in Ukraine alongside Hunter Biden and everything else, and they all backstabbed Trump. And some of them had to play the game. Some of them were like, well, 
this motherfucker is popular. He is in the lead. And if fuck it, this is our best chance. Like he was grabbing him by the pee. But aside <laughs> And and the re- the reason I I forgave Trump with the uh, the the comments about Mac- whatever he said I think he was talking about MS thirteen I don't I don't even know it was been all- bad, yeah. whoever right even if he did say Mexicans he did say something at all and the motherfucker ain't lying because can't no can't nobody tell me that there are no rapists no human traffickers no fentanyl no drug dealers like cartel everybody in Mexico it is not news to them that the cartel is controlling the border not us the immigration don't control the border the car especially oh, yeah. with like when uh, abbott governor abbott was trying to bring some of the governors to the table and he's trying to disrupt the supply so that they can talk about hey can you help us um you know that was the right away if you want to see the beat of the country you just have to look at south texas all of south texas to know how much the latinos are supporting the conservative movement call it maga call it trump call america it whatever. first america, yeah call it whatever it is there i mean the entire south uh, texas coast i is think red. the woke shit is really fucking up the, no, the the woke yeah the woke stuff has really turned people off and no listen it's not so much the MAGA, but the more conservative, even out here in California, it's growing. It's growing bigger and bigger every day. And that's actually a good thing because people are getting on. The, the woke stuff is 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 destroying us as yeah. far as as far as how much they're pushing it into us. They're they're trying to shove it down our throat, and a lot of Rasa just doesn't like it. And, and I stand with them. I'm I'm like I said, I'm to the center, but I, I lean a little bit more to the right because of that. Well, you know what? I heard it described that I think this was a pretty good description. I was like, oh shit. Uh, I forget who it was, but he basically said the Democrat Party miscalculated the Latino vote uh, based on the trends and the shifts that are happening politically. Right. You know, people waking up. The conversations are happening. He said the Democrats saw the Latino vote as, oh, they see themselves as people of color. Therefore, you put them in the same bucket with the black folk and anybody else that we consider to be oppressed and marginalized. All the gay, trans, black, Asian, todos, todos, anybody who ain't straight white male, they put us all in this one bucket, people of color. And they assume, they're like, we just had this racial reckoning, George Floyd, BLM, the, the summer of love, the peaceful, mostly peaceful protest. They're going to still be with us. But the miscalculation is that Latinos started to realize, well, hold on, homie, I don't necessarily i'm down with burning down and and chop and chaz and all the different purple hair and the all the pronouns and you know just they're kind of like we kind of like law and order and we kind of like a strong economy yeah so at the end of the day that's that's a major factor and i think that in the future at in the future i don't even think i know for a fact we're the ones that are going to be swaying the vote because you pretty much know the 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 white vote is pretty much split already the african american votes pretty much going democrat even though more african americans are voting for the right a little but bit, there's yeah. more latinos going towards the right but hopefully eventually that'll make the left wake up and say hey do we need to kind of cater to them or so we're their customer we're one of the biggest paying customers but we don't get catered to like i said because we're getting ignored from both sides but también it's we don't make noise, Chingo. And that's one thing I keep telling Rasa. We need to make some noise because we're that worker at work that's been working there for 20 years. And the guy who's been there for five years is making more money than us. Why? Because we don't make any noise and we just sit there and say, no, no, estamos bien. Estamos... No, as individuals, listen, as individuals, you're doing great. I'm doing great. Your producer over there is doing great. We're all doing real good. But as a whole, as a collective, I don't think we as brown men and women are really pushing the narrative that we should and we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be shamed to say we're proud to be brown. We shouldn't be shamed to say, hey, what about our people? Because everybody else is getting a piece of the pie except for us. Yeah, and I feel like that's a big thing we have in common. You know what I mean? Like, we, we're we for economic power of, of our people and, and political power, and we don't want to be taken advantage of. And like you said, they need to cater to us and earn our vote and not just assume and take it for granted or anything else. Like, I did this event recently for... Uh, it was like a conservative, super Republican thing that they invited me to go like do 15 minutes of stand up. And the governor was there and I'm up there roasting Austin, Texas, the capital, because they have a ton of homeless and it's very woke. And uh, that's where the governor's mansion is. So I didn't hold back. Like I didn't hold back. I'm talking about his backyard. Uh, I'm cracking jokes about, you know, inflation, the gas price, you know, uh, Biden's cognitive decline yeah. and Putin tax. <laughs> yeah yeah putin's price hack you know it's the, not a joke guys and um and you know what man everybody is was very excited to be like yo 
man, like, like Latinos, you know what I mean? Like they're out here. Like, you know, Jesse Olguin from Lexit. Yes, of course. Lexit. Yeah. So shit, he got a similar passage yourself, man. He was out there. He was active. And, uh, I think it's a beautiful thing, man. Like it's big homies. Um, you know, we all come from like a little bit different background, different States, but at the end of the day, our heart's in the right place. We yes. definitely just want the best. We're not, sometimes people assume and they imagine things. They think they're mind readers and they think, oh, you hate your people, you're a sellout, you're racist, you're a Nazi, que la chinga. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, wey, this exageres. <laughs> no, and that's just people who are ignorant, don't know much. Like I said, people still think you and I, like, we, I hate you or you hate me or whatever. I'm like, no, I talk to Chingo. We got, we, that shit's over with. We yeah, had that yeah. conversation. And that's what we need to do. We need to have those conversations because we have so much more in common. Whether it's you from Texas, somebody from New Mexico, a Latino in Denver, Arizona. Anyway, we have so much more in common, have so much of the same traditions and values, and we just need to kind of let people know, hey, man, we have a lot more in common. We need to start coming together. And that's, on, I don't know if you know, on May 21st, we're actually having a meeting out here in North Hollywood. I've invited all kinds of people, and we're just going to sit down and just have a conversation about us and how we can progress in America as a whole. And people say, well, you're crazy. Gil's not going anywhere. Well, if we don't try, if we don't start, then it's never going to happen. You the, the tree will never grow if you don't get that work and plant that seed. And I'm trying to plant that seed to make us actually get politically uh, educated, brother. For sure. Hey, on that note, man, we appreciate you. Uh, everybody listening, go give uh, his channel a, a subscribe, leave a comment, check out some of the videos, a lot of good content. Uh, how often do you go live and stream and upload? I go, I go live like probably once a week. I'll take uh, I'll take phone calls, which is great. So if anybody and, and I love it because people want to disagree with me, and I tell them call in the show, call in the show. We can have that conversation. So I take live phone calls on usually on Tuesdays. I'll probably do a live tonight, and then we'll do interviews like every week or so. I don't like I said I don't really put myself a schedule. Just if I get something burning in my in my belly, then, then I'll make a video. So yeah, you guys can tap in American Cholo podcast or just American Cholo on YouTube and on IG is the real American Cholo. And the same thing on TikTok. Yeah, for sure. We we didn't get a chance to do a deep dive like a uh, Honduran American, uh, the story of how your mother brought you. Uh, was she sent for you, right? Like she came yeah, first? Yeah. She, uh, my mom left me and my brother. I was born in 75. She left me. It had to be about 78. I was yeah. three years old. I, I didn't really remember her. Uh, she sent for me, like I said, in 1981. Uh, she came here illegally. And then in 81, me and my brother actually came in a plane over here. So I, the last thing I remember was in, was uh, here. I mean, when I first came was out here in 1981. And I didn't really call my mom, mom chingo until maybe, uh, maybe like eight or 10 years ago, soon after my brother's death. Eight or and 10 years ago. Wow. Bro. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, I, 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 I just, like I said, we, I grew up in a different environment. She was. The one slanging coke. I was the one gang banging. It was, it was a, I was, it was a place like where the last time I got arrested was in '97. My mom comes to the door. She goes, "You got any guns? You better get them out. The cops are coming." And I'm over here with the homies getting the straps, and they're raiding my house. Not for me. They're raiding my house for my mom's. Mm. And if you if you saw my mom and spoke her, you would never in your life believe it. She's like maybe now like four foot ten soft-spoken lady, real sweet. She's a beautiful woman. And, you know, she would sometimes tell me, even to this day, mijo, I'm so sorry for not being that lovable mother because she she raised us to be tough. Like yeah. It was like, you got to be tough. These are the yeah. streets. is how you do it. But that's what made me survive. And, and I tell her, I said, Mom, you gave me two of the greatest things I would ever ask for. You gave me life, and you brought me to America and made me a U.S. citizen. That's right, man. American Cholo, go check him out. Uh, much success, brother. Uh, keep being a, a strong, powerful voice and keep, you know, building that bridge and educating people, man. We appreciate Thank you, you man. Thanks I for your time, you, man. Thank you, Shingo. Gracias, right, brother, you guys have a good one. Peace.